Hello, this is Michael Rojas. I am doing my presentation for the Educational Technology and Simulation course. This is my narr narrated version of my Chapter 2 of the Quest Journal. The presentation I'm about to present is for Simulation Design, Knee Injection, titled Back to Basics, Knee Injection. Uh, my introduction involves uh, showing how important it is to uh, understand and be comfortable injecting a knee. Osteoarthritis uh, has been found to be uh, one of the most common disorders in the U.S., leading to disability in the U.S. and other and worldwide. Um, osteoarthritis is expected to be uh, is expected to increase due to aging population and obesity epidemic. Uh, the U.S. Uh, of U.S. adults ages 65 and older, 33.6 percent or 12.4 million of the U.S. population. Uh, will have this condition, and again, this just under uh, underscores the reason why uh, in primary care, APPs should understand, feel comfortable in injecting uh, a knee. Instructional objectives are the following. By the end of the course, the APP will be able to incorporate proper knee land uh, incorporate proper knee landmarks identification technique to correctly mark the injection site for a knee uh, for a knee using obser uh, observational and checkoff list according to the uh, attached protocol. Second, incorporate and in supplies needed for injection and proper placement of the supplies according to the use um, for the knee simulation. Again according to the attached protocols. And thirdly, uh, demonstrate proper knee and leg position for the procedure itself. For an instructor to have a proper uh, and successful um, simulation, he or she needs to have done some pretty significant homework in regards to considering the learners for the course, what are their objectives needed, and what is required to get to to those objectives successfully. Factors uh, are the following. Psychomotor skills required prior to simulation. This is considering what the learners need to be able to do or have mentally prepared. Assessment of knee identifying proper landmarks. Ability to ins insert a 23 gauge needle to the lateral knee and correctly administ administer a steroid. Another factor for consideration for the educator is cognitive activities required prior to uh, simulation. Uh, I personally like the idea of having the students or learners have prepared prior by doing de independent reading, watching a video, uh, and uh, have the lecture initially, which is really relatively small. Um, I prefer active learning rather than passive learning. Um, personally. In this case, independent reading, I found um, online uh, the course or of literature for up-to-date on knee injection as well as a video from YouTube, uh, which I felt to be fairly close to my uh, to the way I uh, do the procedure. There's nothing, there's no uh, special or perfect procedure, but it's the closest that I could um, to have to mine. Uh, I don't have any computer uh, simulations, but rather will have uh, in clinic or at the at the facility um, the simulation. And again, the lecture will be a short 20 minutes initially. Uh, so to answer questions from the previous homework they they had uh, right off right off the bat, and also to review what's expected the parameters so everybody is aware of what they need to uh, do to successfully complete uh, the course. An additional factor is instructional for instructional objectives is fidelity checklist. This is to make the, sim, um, the simulation as close as reality as possible which will also give uh, the learner or, or the APP more confidence and be able to handle a real situation and to also treat the scenario as a real situation and answer questions as we go um, with the individual who's doing the or practicing 
uh, with the simulation and uh, the other students or learners also participating by watching and asking questions as well. Again, active learning. I apologize, I got a little bit off on the subject. In regards to fidelity, uh, fidelity check, uh, it should be really setting the environment correctly, exam room, um, the mannequin, which we will be using, props, uh, again, the table in my case, um, again, reviewing guidelines, uh, roles, so everybody, everyone knows what, the, uh, what is expected. And uh, each of these factors should be reviewed prior to onset of the simulation. Prior to the onset of the simulation, they will be given, uh, each individual will be given uh, the same history uh, of, of, of report, which is uh, presenting of a 58-year-old female with a right knee pain six months, aggravated with activities, medial knee pain in particular, no recent injury or trauma, x-rays uh, noted no acute process, but positive for advanced medial osteoarthritis, an x-ray we provided similar to this example. Uh, vital signs are given, uh, all in room air. This slide uh, presents a scenario progression outline. This is in particular uh, important, I feel, because this will keep the rhythm of the course going smoothly or, or roughly, nothing's perfect. But this will give uh, the, provi uh, the instructor uh, roughly a time management so to keep the flow going uh, and the process and also to keep on task with in regards to the objectives to, to be successfully completed. Um, as you can see, the time starts from initially uh, washing hands for the scenario uh, introducing oneself through uh, the exam itself, prepping of the knee, and, um, and getting the knee injection uh, properly, again with a checkoff list, and also uh, there is an area of, of um, cues uh, the instructor can provide to the, uh, to the learner, so to move the process forward if the learner is stumped. The scenario progression continues uh, to uh, the band-aid onto the mannequin. Uh, the last part uh, is to review um, with the patient uh, possible risk, uh, you know, what to watch out for in particular, which will also be on the list. The last portion of the uh, simulation is debriefing. A guided reflection questions, which are the following 12. They're either done openly with everyone there or a survey anonymously. Um, I feel given th this is an opportunity for the APPs or learners to recap on um, the information. Also uh, answer any deficits, uh, questions they have uh, at the end of the, of the presentation or simulations. Um, this again also provides an opportunity for the instructor or the department to get information from the actual simulation and how to improve, uh, to if any ad um, identified weaknesses were present and to make changes as needed to improve the simulation uh, slash course. Uh, in summary, again, uh, the beginning of this lecture really presented the importance or the reasons for why uh, an APP in, in primary care is really at the uh, is in the front uh, front lines of the future for osteoarthritis and the need to uh, feel comfortable uh, performing uh, a knee injection of a steroid, which will later present for aspiration as well if uh, wanting to uh, further their education and their comfort level. Uh, again, a well-planned simulation has the following instructional learner objectives, psychomotor skills, cognitive activity required, which we reviewed previously, the fidelity, the fidelity uh, checklist, scenario, scenario progression outline, which gives an opportunity for the instructor to really focus on specifics, minute details, uh, which uh, made a difference for me while uh, getting this presentation ready. And lastly, a debriefing uh, guidelines, again, to give 
the learner an opportunity to uh, recap, uh, learn again, possibly answer some gaps that they had on information, as well as an opportunity to improve the actual simulation course. Again, thank you very much. Um, the following is my references. I appreciate it.